In this video, I'll be talking about the natural minor scale. I'll be looking at its close relationship to the major scale, how to recognise when you need to use it, and how to improvise with it. First of all, let's look at the C major scale. This is the easiest scale to talk about because it has no sharps or flats. If you play it on a piano or keyboard, then you only play the white keys. The notes are C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and to complete the octave, C. All major scales have a very closely related minor scale. To find it, all you have to do is go to the sixth note of the major scale. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now the sixth note of the C major scale happens to be A. If you play the exact same notes as the C major scale, but instead of starting on C you start on A, then the resulting scale is the A natural minor scale. The notes are A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and to complete one octave, A. Why does this relationship matter? Well, it matters because not only do the two related scales share the same notes, they share the same chords. When we play chords in the key of C major, all of the chords are constructed from the notes of the C major scale. In other words, the white notes of the keyboard. So, chord one in the key of C major is, of course, C major. We construct this chord by taking notes one, three, and five of the C major scale, the notes C, E, and G. We call that collection of three notes taken from the underlying scale a triad. So that's chord one. Chord two is constructed by moving up the scale and taking notes two, four, and six, or D, F, and A. And when you put those together, chord two is a D minor chord. It can't be a D major because that contains an F sharp. And remember, the scale of C major has no sharps or flats. Similarly, we get E minor as chord three, F major as chord four, G major as chord five, A minor as chord six, and an unusual little used chord called B diminished as chord seven. Now here's something very interesting. The chords we just went through being derived from the C major scale belong to the key of C major, but they are also used in the key of A natural minor. For example, let's say you have a chord progression that goes A minor, G major, D minor, E minor. Now none of these chords contain sharps or flats, so the A natural minor scale can be used to improvise a solo over those chords. Here is a two octave shape for the natural minor scale. It's a movable shape because it doesn't contain any open string notes. It takes its name from the root notes which are played on the top and bottom strings as well as the fourth string. So if I start it here at the fifth fret, it's the A natural minor scale. Here's how we play it. So you position your fingers in fifth position so that the first finger plays the fifth fret, the second finger plays the sixth fret, and so on. On the bottom or sixth string, we play the notes A, B, and C with fingers one, three, and four. On the fifth string, using the same fingers, we play D, E, and F. On the fourth string, using fingers one and three, we play G and A. And that completes the first octave. On the third string, we change position from fifth position to fourth position. So now the first finger plays the fourth fret, the second finger 
plays the fifth fret and so on. With fingers one, two and four we play B, C and D. On the second string we go back to fifth position and repeat the fingers one, two and four pattern from the previous string and that gives us E, F and G. Finally we play A on the top string. Here's the full scale, up and down. So using a backing that I looped earlier, I'm going to improvise using this two octave A natural minor scale. Watch out for special effects such as vibrato, hammer-ons and pull-offs, slides and string bends. The chords that I played on a loop are extended versions of the simple triad chords I talked about earlier on. They are A minor 7th, G 7th, D minor 7th and E minor 7th. All of the notes used in these chords still come from the A natural minor scale. Earlier in this video I mentioned the very close relationship between A natural minor and C major. We can take advantage of this when we improvise. There's a two octave C major scale shape starting here at the 8th fret. We play it in 7th position and play the first note using the second finger. So the notes are C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C and then a second octave with the same notes. Now I'm going to improvise using the C major scale over the same A minor backing as before, but first here's the scale. <laughs> So this is a very good way of making sure that your improvisation doesn't rely too much on overused cliches. The major scale shape suggests very different riffs and licks to you um, as you improvise, but it fits because it's made up of the exact same notes as the natural minor scale. One last thing. In a natural minor key, the perfect cadence that is commonly used at the end of a section of music would be chord five, followed by chord one. In A natural minor, this would be E minor, followed by A minor. A possible melody line might be the notes G to A. Now, some composers feel that this doesn't make for a satisfying enough cadence, so they make a slight adjustment. Instead of playing E minor, they borrow the E major, or even the E seventh chord from the parallel major key A major. 
Now these chords contain not a G, but a G sharp. So watch out for that, because it means that you have to slightly deviate from the natural minor scale, but only when the other musicians are playing the E major or E seventh chord. During that time, you can't play G, you have to play G sharp to fit in with the chord. So there's another scale for that called the harmonic minor scale. The only difference between the harmonic minor and the natural minor is that sharpened seventh. I'll discuss this more in a future video. Thanks for watching.